Hello, welcome back and a very good evening to Let's Code x86 assembly. And in this series we learn how to code for the Intel 8086 and later processors using Oscar Toledo's Programming Boot Sector Games book as a starting point. You can get it from lulu.com as a printed version or you can also go to nanochess.org Oscar's homepage where you can also have an ebook which is uh, significantly cheaper. So you decide if you want to have this book when you follow this video series. Um, anyway, in the last few episodes, we learned some basics. This time we want to read from the keyboard and code a little guess the number game. And um, the first function that we need to know is from the BIOS. There's the interrupt 16, which is the API for interacting with the keyboard. And function zero waits for a key press and reads a character. It's actually blocking, so it really waits until the user has pressed a key. So let's introduce this function and we call it read keyboard. We need to save the registers that are modified, which are bx, cx, dx, and si and di. Um, and in the opposite order we need to restore them upon leaving the function so let's do that as well and then return the function as you can see here asks for the function number in the auxiliary high register so ah becomes zero bios read keyboard and then we call interrupt 16 hexadecimal, which is the BIOS keyboard interrupt. So that should do it. And uh, if we want to guess a number, we will have to generate a random number, more or less. We can do this by reading out the programmable interval timer on port 40 hexadecimal, which gives us the time of day clock and there we can more or less uh, take the lower bits to uh, generate a more or less random number. We can use the in function for that or the in command. There's in and out for reading or writing. And this is specific to the 80, x86 uh, CPUs, which have a special way to talking to hardware, usually you will have in other systems and also on the x86 memory mapped I.O. where you read from a certain memory address, but um, the I.O. space on Intel hardware is special to that in that regard that you don't have a true memory region, but rather an address range which is separate from actual random access memory. So we will read into um, the auxiliary lower register from the address hexadecimal 40. We read the timer and then we will mask all the lower bits and that we get a uh, number between 0 and 7. So the user doesn't have to guess like uh, a lot of values and I'm not even sure um, Wow, what accuracy the timer has. Um, let us see. Uh, counter mode bits. The first one is in mode 3. There's a square wave generator. Well, um, doesn't say here exactly. Um, might be that the other bits are not related to the time or at least not to the seconds. So let's rather stick to that. That's what is described in the book and this should work. And next, we will convert this to an ASCII number. In the previous episodes, we would have used um, adding the hexadecimal value 30, which is the ASCII code for the zero digit. But as a shortcut, we can just write the zero in quotes. Um, which gives us the same value actually in hexadecimal. So this actually converts to the ASCII value. And then we have to store 
this value in the CL register because we will overwrite the AL register a lot. Next up is the actual game loop um, where we will ask the user to input something and we do this by printing a question mark. Same principle here. We will call the already known display letter function that we implemented in the last episodes. Um, we will print also a space after that because I think that looks better and print that as well. And then we'll read the keyboard um, and also display whatever this function returned because this will return um, read keyboard to L print input because the read keyboard function won't print anything on the screen so we will do that instead so that we also have a visual feedback what we input basically um, and then we call new line otherwise the screen will get pretty cluttered and then we'll repair uh, compare the results that we read in with what we stored and if the result is not equal we will give the user another guess so compare we'll compare the two values al contains the one that we just read from the keyboard cl contains the value that we generated up here and if those are not equal jump if not equal that's what j and e stands for we return to the game loop and the same happens again we again print the question mark then the space then we read from the keyboard print the letter that we just read print the new line and compare again this loop will continue until the user has figured out which number it is so probably up to eight tries okay if this uh, worked then we will call a display letter again but with a space and also we want to print a happy face um, the happy face or smiley is part actually of the ascii table it's the very first character in the ascii table and we'll use that to show the user yeah you got it and that's already our game um, we can probably compile this yes it works and we can start dosbox go to our directory and we'll try out the game there's the prompt the question mark let's try zero nope one two three four five six it was the number six this time and you can of course play this game many times and this time we got it in one try so although this is a very simple game i think um, we can learn already quite a few concepts here the keyboard input is of course very valuable if you want to have interactive programs. We will come back to um, reading scan codes and function keys and stuff like that, not only ASCII characters. I already have one video talking about that in the Let's Code MS-DOS series. You can already check that out if you want. But I guess we will come back um, to that topic as well in a later episode here. But for now, this is already pretty good. We can already input some data. We also learned about the in and out commands for um, reading and writing to hardware in the system. And the timer is only one of the things that you can actually access. There's a lot more. Um, anyway, uh, that's it for today. We start off the new year with a short episode. Um, yeah, make sure to try it out. And uh, I hope you will learn something here. and. I hope to see you in the next episode. Uh, as usual, you can, of course, leave a comment and uh, make sure to subscribe to not miss any of the new episodes. And yeah, see you soon.